Section 2.4, the last section in chapter 2, is pretty quick and easy, especially because it kind of follows the pattern of the earlier sections in this chapter, where you'll learn how to build a kind of model with a given formula, and then you can make predictions with that model, and there's also a regression just like you've done with linear, quadratic, and exponential models. So most of the concepts are pretty familiar, nothing really new, it's just a new formula. The point of a logistic model is that it accounts for limited resources. So it's like exponential growth with an extra piece. And basically, if you let exponential growth continue going, eventually the results become um, unrealistic. Just like we saw with linear models, there are sometimes if you try to take things too far that your results get kind of ridiculous. So there's a quick story here of an example of how exponential growth gets out of hand pretty quickly. And if you take the world population, for instance, again, I run through a quick example of making predictions. And as you go forward in time, the exponential model starts to overestimate the population because it's not accounting for the fact that as we um, run into kind of some limits because of limited resources, uh, population growth starts to slow. So there's a more complicated but more realistic population model here. Notice we have P for population. There's this P0, that's our initial population, as before. We have E, that's the same exponential, natural exponential number. And then R is our growth rate. T is still time. So there's a lot of familiar pieces. The one new piece is this M, which is the maximum population, or also called the carrying capacity. So that's the only new piece. Everything else um, is stuff we've seen before. Um, the E we saw with compound interest, continuous compound interest, and the other pieces we've used earlier in this section, or in this chapter. Um, here's an example of what the graph looks like. Notice how it kind of looks like an exponential curve, that initial shape, but then eventually it starts to kind of level off and that's the key to logistic models, is they kind of have this S shape where um, it starts to look exponential, but eventually it starts to level off as it approaches this limiting population, the maximum population possible. And uh, basically the, the person who discovered this used it to predict populations out about 100 years, which is uh, pretty dramatic and got pretty good results um, by using this logistic model. So it's pretty impressive that we're able to do that. Um, you'll see a couple examples here. Again, the, the core concepts are very similar to what we've already done here. Um, I give you some information. You can uh, just plug in those numbers you're given to this model, and you can make predictions for the future. Just be careful with your calculator. Take it one step at a time. Don't try to plug everything in all at once um, to avoid kind of simple calculation errors. But you can make predictions at some future time. Then this example kind of puts things together where you, uh, first of all, will predict the population in a future time, and then you'll find the time when the population reaches a certain level, just like we've done with linear, quadratic, and exponential models. And again, we're going to use the calculator to answer part D. So you can go through this example. Again, you can watch the video uh, to see it in more detail, but basically it, it follows a similar trend to the other sections. And then lastly, there's logistic regression, just like linear regression or quadratic regression. If we're given some data, we can use our calculators to build a model that fits this data as closely as possible. So here's some population data. You can go into the stat menu and right under the linear and exponential, there's a logistic regression option. And if you run through that, it'll give you the values of those numbers. Notice it labels them slightly differently, A and B and C, instead of the M and the P0 and so on. But it's the same kind of thing. You can fill in that model and then you can make predictions once you have that model set. Um, and that's about it for section 2.4. It's pretty quick and easy, um, or quick at least, and, and the concepts are, are similar to things we've done before. So there's not a lot uh, that's new in this section, so it should be fairly straightforward.